Hey, it's Alex Rath of Board Game Co. And today, this is definitely, most definitely, not a two-back or not-to-back. And that, that's because I popped up my tab, started doing my research, and realized that I had like two or three updates and then like four Kickstarters. There's barely anything to talk about right now, which means you can enjoy the break that your wallet is being given for at least this week, possibly next as well. Don't get me wrong, there are Kickstarters, but they're smaller and not nearly as hyped or anything or basically smaller stuff available right now. So, so enjoy the break, check out what you want, back an indie project, do all that. And instead, because of the fact that I feel it would be wrong, a violation of whatever weird relationship that we have to not have a Monday Kickstarter video, today I'm slotting in my my what I backed in November video. So this instead is going to be two updates, just two minor updates, nothing crazy, and then what I backed in November. And we're going to go into all of that. So to begin with, update-wise, Four Humors just did a review this past Saturday, so check that one out. Ends in four days left by the time you're watching this. Uh, check it out. I think it's a light, whimsical game. I'm very happy with it. I will 100% be adding this one to my collection. This is, it's like betrayal, backstabbery, and negotiation all wrapped up into like a half-hour-long game with, with whimsical, adorable artwork. It is... How to rate it. I don't know. I like it. I like it a lot. I'm adding it to my collection. From there, we have USS Freedom. This is a big update for those who are following this game. Ends in three days. But effectively, what they did, they made a huge change because basically there was enough demand. Let's see if we can find the, the update over here. So what they did is people basically, lots of people were intrigued by the game, but were not pulled in by the cosplay, which I mentioned in my review that I can see other people being turned off by it, primarily because I myself would probably have been turned off by it, if not for the fact that by the time I first found out it was the theme, I was already playing the game. And so that's how I got hooked in despite the theme. And I don't mind the theme. I actually find the theme very funny, amusing, different, or whatever it is. But no nonetheless, to appease the people who were turned off by the theme, they are adding a 16 crew of with alternate artwork that actually changes once they die. So you can see over here, this is her over here. Once she dies, suddenly she has a replacement hand cannon or whatever it is. So it's going to be new artwork with non-cosplay theme, but also a slightly different mechanic to how they work. So if you were pulled in by this game before, and the theme and the cosplay aspect was pushing you away, then check out USS Freedom because, well, that's changing there. And from there, we will start with what I did or did not back. And as usual for these videos, in terms of everything, this is everything that has an end date in November, even though technically we have one more day to November, but nonetheless, I know what I'm backing by now. So anything that has an end date in November that I was in any way interested in, I am covering over here and we'll go through all of them. So to begin with, we have Here Be Dragons Into the Unknown. This is one that I was intrigued by, and I kept waiting for it to fund, and then I kind of forgot that it had funded. So I plan on looking into this one in terms of a late pledge, potentially. Just uh, not nothing to do with holding its value. I was just pulled in. I think it's a light... It looked lightweight accessible. I have not backed it. I plan on looking into a late pledge option and possibly backing it there. It did look interesting, but as of right now, I have not currently backed it, so that's where this one lands. Next up, we have... Nova Aedas Renaissance. This one definitely falls into a category of games that I was interested in. This is by Lewis Magna Studio, and this is one that, I mean, it's 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 got miniatures and fun stuff and campaign and characters and abilities and all those things. It also has a campaign, and I would say that every single game that has a campaign is already an instant strike in the not backing category. That being said, I do tend to get pulled in despite myself. And so the question is what the game is offering, what the game is delivering, what it's bringing to the table, the miniature design, the miniature art, the, the game mechanics, the, the publisher, the, the designer, all these things, do they wrap up to pull me in enough despite myself? And the answer of Nova Aedas Renaissance, I, it, it didn't. I was intrigued. I did really strongly debate backing towards the end, especially for all the Black Rose Wars extras, because I do have Black Rose Wars behind me on the shelf over there. And so I was very tempted to back this one. In the end of the day, I decided not to for right now. Hopefully, well, I'll, I'll be keeping an eye on it over the, in the future. If it gets great ratings, maybe I'll be pulled in then. But yeah, I think it's a solid back. In fact, I gave it my pick of the week or whatnot, but nonetheless, I am passing on this one in the end. From there, we have Darkest Dungeon, the board game. And I debated including this one in the list because... I don't know if I was ever really... I don't know if I was ever really going to back this one. This is one that I was theoretically pulled in by, but the, the game itself, the mechanics of the game, never really appealed to me. The miniatures, to no end, appealed to me. Will it hold its value? 100% yes. The Mythic Games, amazing. Everything like it should, in theory, line up. But in practice, the gameplay didn't pull me in at all, not even remotely. And I, I can't speak as to, to why that is. I just... Every single gameplay video I watched did not appeal to me in what the game was doing. Uh, do I think it's going to be the right game for many people? Sure. Is this one of Mythic Games' most successful games ever, if not the most successful game ever? I don't actually know all their funding total, so maybe not. I don't know. But 
that five and a half million dollars raised it's it's darn successful and i am happy for every one of those twenty eight thousand eight hundred and forty two people who backed this game and i hope that it delivers an amazing experience for you for myself i passed our darkest dungeon the board game one of my few elements of self-control in fact I actually have a decent amount of self-control this month in terms of things that I either backed or was very interested in and pulled back from. And so Dire Alliance Horror will be the next in that line. Dire Alliance Horror, I basically, I like the game. To be very clear, I enjoyed the game that I actually played. I played this game uh, on Tabletop Simulator, at least one version of the game, and I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a solid, solid experience. Uh, very much giving you uh, the gameplay of War Chest, the gameplay of Undaunted, but with more of a... Um, fantasy theme going on to it, more of powers and abilities and factions and things that I like in games. At the same time, the theme over here, the horror theme, did not appeal to me. And so, given my host of unplayed games and the host amount of games I have, I did, at the end of the day, pass on this one last minute. I waited till the end. And part of that, by the way, part of that is the fact that the Kickstarter was not as successful as I would have liked. So, while I still believe it's a solid back, while I still believe you'll get your money back because they did give you plenty of extras, I think that the nature of the fact that Blacklist Games actually does do realistic stretch goals and gives you real extras, there was probably, you know, another 20, 30 miniatures or more content that could have been unlocked had this thing funded even further and had it funded even further I probably would have been too pulled in by the value proposition of it to to eventually make that call but for me at the end of the day I did pass on this one I think it's a solid choice to anyone who did back it uh, for me I'm, I'm waiting I'm keeping my eyes peeled for the same game but with a fantasy theme you deliver the exact same game but with a fantasy theme instead of a horror theme and I will be there because I like the gameplay I'm just looking for excuses not to back games nowadays and the lack of me being pulled in by the theme combined with the fact that the funding goals kind of staggered out and stopped really growing that was enough for me to uh, eventually last year the campaign drop the campaign rune reprint and new micro expansion this is a light little micro card game which you place down your pieces and you put down your guys on those tiles in order to get area control of different colors and whatnot look like a fun little mic light micro game and you're talking about like 10 15 bucks to get it and I was almost going to get it because of that, but then I remember the fact that I have so many... I have Tussie Mussy sitting on my shelf unplayed. I don't know why I need to get another game when I have Tussie Mussy sitting there. Well-rated well, well, well -rated game, well-loved, uh, by Elizabeth Hargrave, I believe. So I basically passed on Rune just because I have plenty of games that can fill that slot. That being said, I was definitely tempted by Rune. I'm just... Again, we haven't gotten to the part where I show you the five or six Kickstarters I did back and... That number used to be like two or three, so it's been, we've had a hard few months. Fortunately, December will, nope, nope, December's going to be tough. We'll come back to December at the end. Atlantis Rising Monstrosities. This is one that I was very interested in and almost ended up backing this one. Effectively, Atlantis Rising is a game that I really enjoyed, but eventually got rid of over time. I, I, I liked it to a degree. I, I was going to say I liked it a lot. I think it's a solid game. Production value is insane. The actual game is great. To me, the thing it has as a mechanic in a game that I don't like is to a certain extent you get weaker as the game progresses. The lands start falling in. These island tiles start falling in. And what previously the dice you were able to roll and get a 3 plus, now suddenly you have to get a 5 plus or whatever it is. Meaning it's harder and harder to actually get what you need out of this slowly shrinking island. And the rest of the game I could justify. The rest of the game I'm interested in. But I don't like the mechanic where you get weaker as the game progresses. I do not like that at all. I like getting stronger as the game progresses. Give me give me hard things. Give me stuff to deal with. Give me more dragons rising out of the ocean while I get stronger. I'm okay with that. I don't mind the game escalating to match what I'm doing. But don't take away from what I can do. And I would say that was the biggest line as to why I eventually got rid of Atlantis Rising. That being said... New Kickstarter, new shiny expansion, and I was tempted to jump back in, and I, I think I will be getting Atlantis Rising back, but I did not I did not back it, get it back in the Kickstarter. I'm keeping my eye on it to hopefully get it at retail at some point in some way. There, it did enough things well that I really liked that I kind of want to add it again to my collection, and I think it's, a again, visually appealing, easy to get to the table, and overall appealing gameplay, despite that one mechanic that is really not a mechanic that I like. So I plan on getting Atlantis Rising back, and from there I'll keep an eye on the expansion, but I resisted the urge to back the Kickstarter myself. From there we go to Sons of Feriel by Tabula Games. This is one that I was very tempted by. The problem is I never got a firm enough picture as to what the game itself did and what it did well. As far as the value proposition, Tabula Games generally do a decent job holding the value, but not amazing. So it's like, it can probably get on the, on the second-hand market later for roughly a similar price once reviews come out, assuming it does well. And if reviews tank it, then I can wait and, well, just not get it at all. So the combination of a value that was not amazing, okay, but not amazing, uh, 
combined with my lack of knowing enough about the game, means despite the fact that I was pulled in by the board, pulled in by the miniatures, I just ended up passing on it. I, I kind of let this one time out. I kept on meaning to look into it more, watch more and more gameplay reviews, watch more and more something about the game. But at the end of the day, things timed out. I got busy. And again, lots of stuff I am backing. And so I'm looking for excuses. Star Scrapper's Orbital. This is one I thought I would back as soon as I saw Star Scrapper's Orbital, you know, designer of Terraforming Mars coming to Kickstarter. I was so interested, so excited, was prepared to back this one day one. And then they kind of had an offering where it's like, here's the game and here's the price tag and here's like 10 promo cards for backing it on Kickstarter, which is fine. That's totally great. But I'd rather save the 10, 15 bucks and see how reviews go out and deal with promo packs later. The, the, a singular promo pack with 10 or 15 cards is generally not going to be enough to push me to back a game on Kickstarter. Uh, that being said, hopefully it's a great game. I definitely 100% plan on looking into this further once it's retail, seeing reviews, seeing if it's for me, backing it, whatever, get it, not backing it, buying it at retail. So I'm very interested in the game, but for right now, I did pass on it despite beautiful artwork, despite the design of Terraforming Mars, despite all around a solid looking engine, the combination of Terraforming Mars and Galaxy Truckers in a single game, that, that should have been an instant back for me. And if it wore a lighter month, I might've been willing to suck up the, you know, the, the 10, $15 extra this cost compared to retail to get it. But again, busy month, lots of games On to the next one. Neomorphosis Infestation. This is one I dropped, like, the last day of the campaign. Like, literally the last day of the campaign I dropped it. I went back and forth on this one big time. I kept on asking myself, which will I regret more? Will I regret more if I don't back this game and people are going on and about it and suddenly I have to pay an extra $100 more because I do believe it'll hold its value? Or will I regret it if I get it and it just doesn't hold up to the other games on my shelf? And, and honestly, I probably should have kept my pledge because I do believe it'll hold its value. I believe I will get my money back and so that risk, I could have, whatever, I could have not taken that risk. I could have taken that risk. But the problem is I'm currently at a point where these, with these games where even something like Zombicide Invader I'm debating getting rid of just because I, I have Zombicide. I have Masters of Darkness 2 coming. I have Zombicide 2 coming. I have Black Plague. I have more and more games in these genres that I like, that I enjoy. Cthulhu Death May Die. I mean, and if, if they put out Cthulhu Death May Die Season 3, that's printing money. Like, I'll just buy 14 copies or whatever it is. I, I won't buy 14 copies. I only need one copy. But I will go all in Cthulhu Death May Die Season 3, Season 4, if or when they ever do that. I have more and more of these games that I love. And so Zombicide Invaders on the chopping block. And Zombicide Invader, I think, is a good game. I just think Black Plague does it better. And so Neomorphosis Infestation, while I was pulled in, while I was intrigued, I... I I was I, I, I used my self-control, I held off, I will keep an eye on it after it eventually hits shelves. If it gets hyped up enough, well-rated enough, then I will jump in on it and change my mind, and not change my mind, but get it then. I'll pay the premium if I need to. But for right now, I'm using the fact that I have too many games in this genre as an excuse to walk away from this one. And this was, like uh, like the, uh, Unmatched, uh, I basically walked, walked away the, la not Unmatched, like um, Dire Alliance. Like Dire Alliance, I walked away from that one on the last day of the campaign after after a lot of soul-searching and, and cancelling pledges and all that. Don't get got secret missions or shut up and sit down. This is one that I was briefly debating getting because it looked like a fun party game, looked like it might have the right time, the right place, being able to play this one. Uh, but, and I, I did decide to get it. I just decided to get a retail copy and I'll you know, maybe I'll get this down the road, who knows. So basically, I passed on the campaign because I decided to get a retail copy and get it right now instead, and that's the short and sweet version of Don't Get Got. The, to be clear, I think the campaign is a better deal. I think if you don't have this game, get the campaign, a better deal. But I just wasn't, I was just getting it for myself for right now, and that's basically it. Uh, Edo Deluxe Master Set and Reprint. This is one that I wasn't even sure if to include in this list or not, but I did include in this list because I technically would have been interested in it, but instead I traded for it right before this campaign went up. I probably should have backed that, uh, the expansion pack or the Shonen Pledge to get the Unpleasant Surprise expansion. Maybe I still should. I should look into that. But I currently have the retail edition sitting on my shelf. Uh, not the retail edition. I currently have the last Kickstarter from the, this uh, from them sitting on my shelf, waiting to be played. I need to read the rules, get it to the table, just along with, you know, another 50 or so games. So interested in the game, but I got the last Kickstarter in a trade instead of backing this one over here. But still included because interest level. Then we get to the one, two, three, four, like seven or eight campaigns that I did back. Like I said, there's a reason I backed, uh, there's a reason I canceled so many Kickstarters that I was very much interested in because I back a lot of Kickstarters, but even I have a limit. I, uh, yeah, 
Anyways, Kabuto Sumo, Kabuto Sumo board game. So this is one by board game tables that I initially wasn't going to get my hands on, but then I realized that it looks like the kind of game I think my kids would really like. And they, they put out a whole thing about how it's not just a kid's game, and that could where it'll be. If it's not just a kid's game, great, I will play it with adults too. But the trigger for me getting this is I think that my kids would enjoy playing this. I think my boys in particular would enjoy the tactile nature of this game. My daughter, as you, if you've seen her reviews already, my daughter already likes playing other games that aren't, you know, little gimmicks or whatnot. My boys generally need the gimmicks. My boys like playing Trogdor the board game where you burninate the countryside. My boys like playing a ninja paw where they can rapidly grab things. I like dragon tower where there's a falling tower being pulled by a dragon and princesses and all that or whatever. I know my boys like princesses. They just like the dragon pulling the rock. Uh, not the same thing wrong with boys liking princesses. But Kabuto Sumo has a tactile feel and look to it that I think they would really enjoy. And so they were the trigger for me backing this game. Um, that's basically it. And so combined with the fact that uh, board game tables, their production value is off the chain and their production value tends to mean that their games generally the cheapest way to get them is on kickstarter by a few bucks not by huge amounts but by a few bucks or whatnot which brings us to taktiki taktiki and these are in no particular order by the way they're literally in the order that i opened the tabs up taktiki is going to be one that i jumped in on this one because this one was is this end of november i can't even remember when this ended I don't know when it ended, but Taktiki is one that I jumped in on. This is one that has, well, this is a, I did a review of this one. It's a memory abstract game, but then it's less about the memory. The memory is a factor. It's less about the memory and more about the outplaying and mind games of, well, if I put this here, it must be a five, or maybe it's really a one and I'm messing with you. It has a, a fun feel to it. It's light. It teaches in three minutes, plays in 10 minutes, easily accessible. And this one was one that I ended up picking up despite being very uncertain about whether it would hold its value compared to uh, getting it at retail down the road. The problem is getting their games at retail, this particular company, Draw Lab, getting their games at retail down the road, sometimes it's a while down the road, and so I, I decided to get it, even though it might be overpaying on the Kickstarter. From there, we get to Burn Cycle. Burn Cycle is another one that I ended up backing just based on just based on Chip Theory games, just based on their reputation alone, uh, and, and the fact, that's not true, their reputation alone, and the fact that their games hold their value, generally speaking. This one will eventually be available at retail, but when it, fit, when it first hits people's shelves, when Burn Cycle first hits people's shelves, and I get that to the table right away, and I give it a shot or not, I guarantee you this game is going to hold its value for that first month or two pretty solidly. Then eventually it'll hit retail, it'll be available in their store, whatever it is, but even then it'll be more because that's their model. They charge more for the game. Generally, Kickstarter is the cheapest way to get a Chip Theory games, and so combined with the... To be clear... This game was very much a work in progress. This game was very much not what I would consider not what I would consider to be finished. Not what I would, I wouldn't consider it to be competitive with too many bones and the experience it delivers and how good it was. Different games, but elements the same, feeling the same. So it, I was backing this one between the the retail between the the value of it and between the fact that I trust Chip Theory Games to deliver an excellent experience as they have consistently done game after game. Doesn't mean it will stay on my shelf long term. Not necessarily. It might be a great game that I say, you know what. Too many other games. I got to get rid of a lot of great games. And it's true. I have to make some hard choices this month with my collection. It's it's getting tough in here. And so that's basically it. I back this one based on Chip Theory Games, their reputation, and the fact that their games generally hold their value, even if not by huge amounts compared to getting it later. Townsfolk Tussle. This is another one that I backed. I backed too many games this month. Townsfolk Tussle is another one I backed. This is by Panic Roll. This is a first time game, and this was a blast to play. My biggest doubt with this one, and I almost, I almost jumped out at the end. My biggest doubt with this game is the fact that I don't know if I have the right game group to play this game. I have enjoyed playing this game, but my wife doesn't have an interest in playing this one. She hates the artwork. It turns her off. And playing with my game group, I think a four player, a three player experience we are generally looking for a different type of game to get to the table. The reason I ended up keeping my pledge in the end is there's a very specific combination of two other people who I can see myself playing with and that they all enjoy it. So from my group of people, it's me and then two others who would enjoy this game. Potentially. Potentially. We'll see. And I was willing to jump in at it because I believe this will hold its value and if I could get it to the table with them, then great. Alternatively, Worst comes to worst, I'll just play it on Tabletop Simulator with Jesse or whoever, because I do enjoy this game. It is a romp of an experience. You just need the right crowd, the right people. And in my opinion, you do need at least three people. You could play it with two, absolutely. But there are other games I'd rather play with two. I'd rather play Cthulhu Death May Die, totally different game, but whatever. Uh, I'd rather play many other games if I'm playing with two. For me, I don't think I would pull this game out unless I had at least three, although everyone's going to have a different collection and different choices that they make in terms of getting one thing to the table versus another. 
Moving on from there to Freedom 5, a Sentinels comics board game. This is another one that is kind of like, uh, kind of similar to uh, Chip Theory Games and Burn Cycle. I am backing this based off the potential that it brings to the table. I enjoyed this game a lot. There were a lot of fun things going on in this game. A lot of feeling like a hero, playing cards, tons of stuff that was very enjoyable every time I played this game. And then also it was fiddly, meaning like Burn Cycle, there were elements of the game that, while I like the overall game, when compared to many other games, the question is, where does it land? Where will it end up being? Like, if I have to choose a game like Freedom 5 that has so many fun moments, but also fiddliness, versus choosing another game that has so many fun moments and less fiddliness, then what will I end up choosing? And so I don't, I don't know the answer solidly, but combined with the fact that I believe it'll hold its value, combined with the fact that the amount of stuff going on here, the miniatures, the gigantic, the, the love for, for the Freedom 5 universe, for the Sentinels of Multiverse universe, I mean, people are picking up that be a, be a citizen pledge at like, what was it, 200 bucks a pop or something like that? I don't remember what it was, but people were paying a chunk of money to be a citizen in this game, and those were selling out like hotcakes, rapid fire, which means people love this game, love this universe. Combine a good game that could potentially get better, combined with tons of content, prepainted miniatures, deluxified everything, and I was confident that I was not risking anything. The only question is, will this hit the table enough to justify its existence, or will it eventually move on? But central, I mean, look at these, look at these miniatures. That's insane. These things look so... These things look cool. Um, I'm, I'm excited about... Just looking at the page, I'm excited about Freedom 5 again. Which brings us to Endless Winter. Endless Winter, which you probably know that I backed this one. Endless Winter is one of the more hyped games I have had this year. One of the more from hyped by me. Meaning, I, I this is one of the... Mo, one of the... How to put this... From the Kickstarter games that I have actually gotten my hands on a copy and reviewed, I would say Endless Winter is my personal favorite from the prototypes I have touched. I'd have to think it through carefully to be sure of that. It's possible that there are some others, but Endless Winter is either up there or it is that one. Endless Winter is deck building worker placement, which I have a video coming this week comparing Endless Winter and Dune Imperium and Lost Wounds of Arnak, all three of which I am absolutely loving in very different ways. There is room for all three in my collection. I will be keeping all three games, not even a question. I have reviews of all three up on my channel, so check those out if you want. But Endless Winter is such a fun experience, does so many things well that, yeah, I back this one complete all in. Look at this, the hunt for the perfect board game. I wasn't actually talking about Endless Winter in that video. I wasn't even planning on talking about Endless Winter in that video. It just happened to drift in, which is why I don't actually have the box in that video, even though I had the box at the time. Either way, I'm rambling. Endless Winter, I back that one all in. And moving on from there, Dark Venture, Battle of the Ancients, Dark Venture. Speaking of self-control and lack thereof, Dark Venture would be an example of my lack of self-control compared to the other ones that I dropped. This is one that Jesse Anderson, Quackalope, uh, sold me on this one, and reluctantly... <sighs> Yeah, anyways, Jesse Anderson sold me on this game by, in our podcast, The Weekly Quack, link in my description down below, talking about how good this game was and what it did well and how it was asymmetrical and did different things and had evolving aspects to whatever. I don't even remember everything he did or said or whatever. What I do remember is I was sold on this game despite not being pulled in by the artwork at all. Will this be a game for me? I have no idea. Did I back it? Yes, I did. Oh, over here, you see? This one. Click here and listen to the Weekly Quack podcast for full thoughts and dark ventures, Battle of the Ancients. That is exactly why I backed this game, because of this little thing over here. So, yeah, it is what it is. You make hard decisions in life. Some of them involve getting good games. Others involve getting games that you eventually get rid of. I don't know which one this will be for me, but I, I was reluctantly pulled in by, by the game. And I'll say this much, if I do end up keeping it, at least it will have the distinction of being completely different looking than anything else I own, which in its own way, is its own merit, so that's basically it. Shogun no Katana, this is another one that I backed, and this is another one that I did a review on and enjoyed very much the puzzly nature of what this game brought to the table. It has a decent, solid worker placement game with tight economic choices of how do I get this versus that, and putting my worker here, and getting my family members here, lots of fun, interesting choices going on, and then combine all that with a puzzle board on the side, in which you are slowly but surely trying to build out your katanas in this game, and navigate your, your tiles around, and able to get three buildings on this one and then put more materials on that one and and decorate the sword here and there it works really well at what it's doing it, it has a tight tight uh, aspect of trying to maximize get what you can out of every single move in this game ultimately a solid game that i that i backed and and now i'm just waiting for the actual copy to come as opposed to the prototype i have because because prototypes aren't as much fun to play as actual copies 
And then we have Feed the Kraken. Feed the Kraken is another one that I was very excited about throwing. And this is one that I backed, despite being not certain about how, how that value proposition will play out. Meaning this is one that's going to be available at retail, and the retail edition will almost certainly be cheaper than the uh, than the Kickstarter version. But in the deluxe Kickstarter version, which they have that one, that one's going to be more of a limited retail release, which is why I backed this game. Or in other words, I love the game. I played this game multiple times. I did a review on it. I was in two live plays of it. Really enjoyed this game. Looking forward to whatever they end up doing next in this series. I just like social deduction as a game as a genre in general and this one brought new things to the table uh in terms of me backing it like i said i backed it not being certain that it was the best economic choice but because i want that deluxe edition and i don't want to have to worry about it being in print out of print or anything else and so fine if, if i have to pay an extra 10 15 bucks for a game i love that i've played that i've got my hands on that i'll do do i recommend that you do it it's up to you i mean i i like the game but doesn't mean that you'll like the game so yeah so i mean that's why i backed it I got, I got pulled in. I like the game a lot. And so I, I ended up backing that one. And again, it may well be a good value. It depends on the final version of whether that deluxe pledge, uh, how much it actually goes for in retail, if it's available, or easy to get your hands on. And lastly, lastly, we have Bardsung, which brings, I don't know, that's something like eight Kickstarters I backed this month. I think one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. That is painful. That is painful. That is the worst month or best month, depends how you look at it. Worst month I've had in a long time in terms of the number of Kickstarter games that I have backed. Hopefully December I will partially make up for it. But Bardsung is one that I ended up backing because it falls into that category of holding its value and me being interested. Meaning, I have played this game. The playing that the, the, the game that I played did not pull me into the game. Basically, Bardsong looks like an accessible dungeon crawl in which you will be leveling up your characters across multiple campaigns. It looks like the kind of game I can get to my ta get to the table at the end of a long day without having intense strategy behind it. Nova Aedas Renaissance has a campaign, but it looks like it's a much heavier system behind it. Uh, Bardsong has a campaign, but it looks like it's a much lighter system behind it. Ultimately, that could work for or against it. That could be a terrible, horrific, not well-designed game that is not good good at all not appealing minimum choices if anything and just not good could be but what i did play makes me think it won't be that way what i did play was promising enough in the cards that you have in the development of your characters in what you are doing seeing other gameplay of it it looks like it will be on the lighter side that might make it something that i don't end up keeping in my collection over time or it could be that's exactly what I need to get a long campaign game done. I mean, Pandemic Legacy, games like Pandemic Legacy, I've played and finished. Rise of Queensdale, I've played and finished. Lighter experiences, I find easier to get through. Cthulhu Death May Die, I've played 50 hours of that thing. Is it lighter? Yes. Is there strategy? Yes. Do I enjoy it? Yes. So the question is, where is Bardsung for me? Is Bardsung going to be a failure of a game that does not deliver on the experience it's promising? Or will Bardsung be an epic narrative experience, I don't really care about the narrative stuff, that is accessible and yet gives you enough choice, enough meaning, that it's still fun? And if it does, I'm interested. Combine all that with the fact that Steamforge games, even their games that don't do well, even their games that are not well rated, I mean, Horizon Zero Dawn is getting very poor reviews right now, but at the end of the day, people are still able to get their money back for it because other people still are hyped and still want those minis. So it will for sure hold its... Well, for sure is a loose word. It will almost certainly hold its value for that first month once it hits. And I think it will do better. I think it will hold its value over time. Although, of course... Time will tell whether I am right or wrong about that. And that is November for me. This no this video is taking the place of the two-back or not-to-back Kickstarter roundup that I do every single Monday because of the first time in a long time, there's just not enough stuff to justify a video. Literally, I, I could do a 10-minute video on it, which I guess is nothing wrong with a 10-minute video, but it feels wrong to do a 10-minute video on a Kickstarter when I normally have like a 50-minute video in that place. In any case, I am Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co., Enjoy the rest that your wallets currently have. Get yourself prepped, though, because we have a lot of things coming soon. We have, uh, with, with with release dates, we have Vindication coming December 9th. That's going to, that I'm going to be hauling on that one. And then we have, with unreleased dates, we have ISS Vanguard and Command Scooby-Doo. And unreleased dates on those could mean anything. Maybe, maybe December, maybe January. We'll see, but we'll find out. In any case, until next time, I am Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. Enjoy the break. And have a good one.